Hi, everyone. Welcome to this webinar that uh, is aimed at bringing you closer to the grants program of the ISTAT Foundation and what it does. My name is Sektor Einarsson. I am the outgoing chair of the grants uh, committee, uh, and I will introduce you to my successor as we uh, get a bit further down in this presentation. Um, if you if we go to uh, into the presentation now, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, why uh, the grants program does exist, what it does, and who is who are the people behind the program. Now, what we do is we uh, we uh, actively award uh, aviation related grant funding to organizations around the globe that are uh, somehow advanced commercial aviation. The idea behind this and much of what the ISTAT Foundation does is to invest uh, your money as ISTAT members back into the industry by um, advancing and, uh, and fostering the next generation of aviation professionals into the industry so that we keep track and, and keep bringing the best uh, brain power available into this industry and uh, keep advancing the industry. If we can move to the next slide. Um, I'd like to uh, explain who qualifies for an ISTAT Foundation grant. Uh, it's important to note that uh, the organizations that get grants must be registered as, registered as non-governmental and not-for-profit in their jurisdiction and must offer aviation focused programs. I mean, the, um, so the programs that we support must be aviation focused. The organizations might have a broader fo focus, but the programs that we will support must be aviation related. Um, we, I can name a few examples. Uh, aviation museums have been uh, a, a large uh, uh, a part of, of uh, foundations that or uh, organizations we have don donated to in the past educational institutions and universities, youth organizations that offer things like summer camps or that, that, that are like, or industry associations and student associations. Now, if you go to the next slides, you will see examples of organizations that we have supported uh, over this uh, in this year and last year. Altogether, 34 organization, uh, organizations, uh, a proud list, I think, and uh, these organizations have received uh, a total of uh, $250,000 in grants in 2020 and 2021 alone. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about the uh, people that are behind the committee or on the committee and behind the work we do. Uh, to, next to myself, uh, there is Ulf Lillenberg uh, from Rockton in Sweden, Mark Gray from Mario Capital, Tracy Renfro, uh, who works for Amazon. Uh, Mike Sotir uh, works for um, Spire Flight in Ireland. Gene Stein is a consultant in the uh, aviation finance industry. And Edo Wire, uh, who works for GA Telesis. And Edo is actually the person who is taking over uh, as chair of the uh, grants committee from myself. So I want to introduce Edo, and he wants he's going to tell us a little bit more about where the uh, where the grants committee is heading over the next year or two. Edo, over to you. Thank you, Sector, and um, a pleasure to take over the grant committee uh, going forward. And I've been member of the grant committee uh, since 2014, and uh, during that time, I've seen. Uh, a, a, tremendous growth in uh, our budget and our exposure to different uh, non-profits organizations in aviation. Um, we'd like to continue this, uh, this trend going forward, increase our budgets, increase our awareness of what the grant committee does within ISTAT to our members, but also to our organizations um, outside of ISTAT, all the different museums, and uh, international uh, non-profit programs that do so much to promote aviation and do so much for the students. Um, so far, the majority of the grants um, and applicants uh, over the years have always been North American focused and North America is blessed to have so many organizations that do so many different things uh, for aviation. And obviously, ISTAT is an international organization, and our goal going forward is to continue to search for international organizations that will promote 
um, aviation around the globe. Um, we'll do that through the help of our um, international network of members with their support and their knowledge and network. We hope to uh, reach different uh, parts of the world and uh, uh, increase our, um, our, um, our print. Um, I'd like to give it back to Sector, um, who will uh, go into a discussion with three of the uh, recipients of, um, I, of the, uh, the Grants Committee. Thank you, Edo. Uh, we now turn over to our panelists. Uh, we're going to have a, a little panel discussion to make you better understand uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, organizations we've been supporting through the years. And we have three great analysts and three, uh, three great examples of, uh, of RRDs that we've had uh, over the last two or three years. Uh, we have uh, first Alison McKay from Women in Aviation International. We have uh, Jane McGill from the Irish Aviation Foundation. And we have, uh, last but not least, uh, Louis Gormanli from the Intrepid Museum in New York. So uh, I want to thank uh, these three panelists for, uh, for joining us and, and helping us uh, and, and you better understand what the uh, Grants Committee does and how the grants uh, from the ISAT Foundation help, help their uh, organizations to uh, foster aviation. Um, so uh, let's bring in the panelists, uh, please. Um, and I want to kick off with a question which uh, basically uh, is to, for the panelists to share a brief summary of their organizations so that we can better understand uh, what you do from day to day. And we'll start with, um, with Alison McKay from Women in Aviation International, please. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Women in Aviation International was founded in the mid 90s as a way to um, encourage young women to enter the industry and also to create programs and initiatives that will support them throughout their career progression. Um, some of those uh, initiatives include um, the ISTAT um, uh, program that they help us fund Girls in Aviation Day is the t-shirt I'm wearing and it is um, an annual event where we bring young women together throughout the world um, and expose them to um, different segments of our industry and jo different jobs that um, exist in our industry to um, to really expose them to all the exciting uh, opportunities that exist in aviation and aerospace. Um, we also host an annual conference, um, which we um, host typically in March, and we bring women together. It's probably the greatest uh, female-centric aviation event for networking, professional de development, and educational content. Excellent. Thank you, Alison. Uh, we can now turn over to Jane McHale from the Irish Aviation Foundation, please. Thank you, Sigtor. Um, Shannon Aviation Museum um, or Irish Aviation Foundation was established in Shannon in 2008 and we provide a unique aviation experience for the general public at our museum. Um, anybody can walk in the door and learn more about aviation. We do this through a range of programs that we deliver to schools, to scouts, to uh, transition year students, which is a gap year in their senior cycle where they learn about careers. So um, we introduce them to various different parts of aviation. We bring them on field trips and bring them into the facilities. And we also bring people down from these facilities, the maintenance facilities, the leasing companies to meet the students and to tell them about their professions. Um, we use our museum, um, which we've been building up since 2010, really. We use all the exhibits for the students' benefits so they can get into the aircraft. They can actually get in and see what it's like to sit in a little small airplane. Um, we can describe what the flaps look like. We can use all the engineering parts that we have. And um, we use our aerospace discovery workshop, which we'll talk about later on. Um, to date, we've probably had about 14,000 educational visits from schools um, and school children over the last 12 years. And some of these kids are now actually working for us in this facility, a number of them who have been here on summer camp um, have grown up in the facility and they're now 
passing their passion on to the next generation. They're working here and their 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 wages pay for their flying lessons in the local flying club. And some of the kids are now actually airline pilots um, and they've grown up and and they're now aviation professionals. So it's really fantastic. So we're delighted to be here and thank you for the invitation. Excellent. Thank you so much. Now over to Louise uh, from the Intrepid. Hi, everybody. And hi, Sid Floor. Um, I'm with the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum. We're located in New York City. We're on the Hudson River. And we're actually a former World War II uh, aircraft carrier or um, a National Historic Monument. And we escapulate many different facets of what it is to be, I guess, an aircraft carrier because we essentially stretch from the sea to outer space. And the outer space part comes in where um, this vehicle, the aircraft carrier, was in service from um, 1943 to 1974. So it was part of World War II, it was part of um, the Vietnam War, and it was part of some of the space recovery um, missions. So therefore, our history, our collection, and our programs cover many different facets of uh, the STEM fields. And so does our collection. And we have 28 aircraft, as well as a submarine. Um, we have a, a shuttle enterprise, and we also have a British Airways Concorde plane. So this museum and everything in this collection, and this collection also includes um, the history and the stories of the people who served um, on the ship and who served in the various other um, artifacts and collections that we have here. So we really have like a body of history that we bring to the students who come to the museum and we serve 30,000 students annually just from the New York City area. We also reach over 1 million visitors annually. So the 30,000 students who are K through 12 students come here to really be inspired by what it is that kind of happened, not just um, on the Intrepid, but in that period of history and how that informs where we are today. And of course, central to all of this is air, aviation, and our collection of planes, which students learn about. They learn about many facets of planes, how they were developed, how they fly. They learn about the physics behind them. They learn about um, design. And they think about what it is, not just to be in a plane, but how, why does a plane work? And in that way, we introduce them to many different facets of what it would be like to have a career in aviation. And of course, just being on this ship, being um, among the artifacts, students are immediately enthralled, excited, and just want to learn more about um, aviation and air. That is just some of the things that we work with when we try and reach audiences around New York and beyond. Thank you very much. Very interesting indeed. Now, uh, as you know, when, when uh, uh, you know an organization uh, reaches out to uh, the uh, to the grants committee for support, it's usually done for a specific project rather than general funds of the organization. Now, if you could share with us uh, some of the successes and how the how the funds received from uh, from the uh, from the foundation has helped you uh, succeed in in, uh, in certain projects. So uh, this time around, I want to start maybe with Jane McGill uh, from uh, from Shannon. If you would tell us a little bit about that, please. Sure. Well, um, to date, we we're, we're a very small facility, and we're we're kind of privately run. So, so funding for this entity is very difficult um, and our struggle is always in capital expenses or it has been for um, the last number of years. So just the money to physically buy things. Um, so we were, we were working on our aerospace discovery workshop um, over the last few years and this is where the majority of the ISTAT funding has gone into. So it's been able to um, provide us the funding to buy equipment for the workshop. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the times 
in the last few years since we've started, there's been a lot of, um, you know, talking about aviation. And, and when kids sit in a classroom, it's nearly the worst place to put them. You know, we all know that listening, sitting there listening to somebody is great and it's lovely. But at the same time, if they were actually doing something, if they were even they were making little magnetic compasses as part of their flight planning, um, so earn, understanding the science behind things, behind power plants, behind engines, electricity, generation of electricity. And so the ISTAT funding has provided us um, the equipment to be able to bring the kids into the workshop and work hands on with, with our volunteers. And um, that's been incredibly important to us. Um, the next round of funding, what we're actually going to do now, finally, we're in a position, we want to bring the students. So now we want to use the ISTAT funding to actually take the students and bring them to us for a week. Um, so we're going to be running the ISTAT Aviation Academy, which um, will fund 16 young people to come here for a week. And that will be the ultimate use of this funding. So what we will say about that is that the, the, the funding will benefit the students. The students can come to us. We will earn our money because we will provide the service. And ISTAT will also be part of this because ISTAT are the ones funding them to bring them in. So there is a certain level of awareness going to be generated internationally about this program. Um, so that's what we're very, very pleased about. Rather than spending money on items, now we can spend the money on bringing the students, which is our number one core issue, is to get people in here and for them to understand and to enjoy and to be inspired. Excellent. Thank you. Now, Louise, if you could get an example from you, how the uh, ISTAT uh, funding has helped the Intrepid uh, succeed on certain programs. Sure. So we have been um, receiving funding since 2016. And the funding that we received from ISTAT really is focused on one segment of programming that we do, and it's called history and aviation programming. And in that programming, we serve um, from grades 3 to 12. And they're broken up in grades three to five, six to eight, nine to 12. And the focus of that program is bringing students on site to the museum. And we have four different um, types of programs that we do. And they're all really focused on um, the physics um, around aviation, around aerodynamics, and um, on the history also that is kind of parallel, obviously, to um, the development of um, aircraft and initially and throughout the ages and the continued evolution of aircraft. And students have 90 minute classes where they're um, on the Intrepid and they go and see different aircraft and they look at them, they think about it. And then they also do independent um, teacher led projects where the, it's like hands on activities. Sometimes they design an aircraft. I mean, you can't really design an aircraft in 90 minutes, but you can actually conceptually think about how it might work. And these are using um, different types of tools, depending on um, the ages of the students. Younger students will have more kind of simplistic, straightforward tools. Older ones will have more kind of advanced to really kind of think about um, aircraft design and um, to think about what are the kind of mechanisms that make um, it work operationally and in the real world. So um, thanks to funding from ISA, we've been able to reach um, 500 students each year with free programs, no fee programs. In total, we reached 3,000 students each year, and these are all coming on site. And of course, the last year was slightly different because we switched to a virtual world, but we actually reached even more students, but um, not on site. And um, so your funding has been really critical to how we have been able to serve under-resourced students and schools in New York City and Surprisingly, there's many, many students um, who are in public schools in New York City who are um, under-resourced. I would not be able to have access to this without um, the funding from ISTAT. 
Thank you very much. Now, Alison, if you could tell us a little bit about uh, the women in aviation uh, uh, grants that uh, have come over over the last couple of years um, and how that has helped your program succeed. Yeah, thank you. Um, Girls in Aviation Day um, actually started as a uh, bring your daughter to conference event. Um, like I said, we host a, an annual conference. Um, that um, that event was so well received that it grew into um, an annual Girls in Aviation Day in the fall. Um, in 2019, we hosted 100 events um, throughout the world, and we were able to bring about 20,000 young women uh, to, to all of those events. Um, the ISTAT Foundation grant has been really instrumental in helping us grow the program throughout the years. Um, in conjunction with the, the in-person event, we also create an Aviation for Girls magazine. And that is really where ISTAT has um, been really key um, for our creation and distribution of that magazine. Um, that magazine highlights um, women in the industry um, and young women entering the industry in a very inspirational way. Um, it also includes all of the um, hands-on content for our activities that we um, that we expose young women to um, in terms of aviation education. So, um, so we you know we are thrilled to to partner with ISTAT. Um, we grow each year. The um, interest that young women have in aviation. Um, is is really um, something that I, I look forward to in the fall each year to see how excited they are. Um, and, you know, we really uh, rely on those types of donations to be able to create these um, really exceptional events uh, throughout the world. Thank you very much. Um, now, uh, our, our, the next topic I want to touch on is something I, I mentioned in my introduction in the beginning here, uh, which is that the real core of the ISTAT Foundation is to invest back into the industry by uh, inspiring the next generation of aviation professionals. And I, I, I think that your three uh, organizations are uh, a perfect example of uh, organizations that share that goal. Can you tell me a little bit about how you came, up, how you came to that conclusion that you want to make at least part of your uh, business to uh, inspire young uh, professionals to get uh, involved in aviation. And this time, let's start with uh, Louise, maybe uh, the, from the Intrepid. Sure. So part of our mission is really to focus on what we call history, service, and science. And so at that real intersection, we are in, we're looking to engage students in different careers that are really, as I said, focused on those areas, particularly um, as they relate to aviation. And um, that is kind of, while we are also focused on, you know, um, air, aerospace too, a um, real kind of key focus is aviation. And um, we work with so many students and so many of them are inspired by wanting to become pilots or wanting to Fly. And I think it's a very um, kind of, it's, it's, it's a dream for many students and, and there's many ways to achieve it. And I think that's where we come in. There are many careers in the aviation field and we look at a lot of these different careers and we talk about a lot of them. You may be in engineering, you may be a technician, you may be a designer, you may be a pilot. There's many ways to enter um, a career in aviation. And we try and open up the box to what these different careers look like. And that's where our STEM comes in and that's where our history comes in. And also that's where innovation comes in because where we are today in aviation is due to innovation as well as everything else. It's dreaming, it's imagining, but it's also developing the practical engineering, critical thinking <coughs> and problem solving skills that are essential to um, any industry, but particularly, I think, the aviation industry and as it continues to evolve. And we are very invested also in um, diversity and inclusion. And for many years, I think 12 years now, we've had a program called Goals for Girls, and it's really focused on girls in STEM. And part of that program, we do a six week intensive every summer. We have one week that's dedicated to aviation and to how um, girls can become involved with aviation. And as part of that, we 
do a mentorship, uh, hour long mentorship program, and we bring in professionals from the aviation field. And for example, this year we had the female dean of the Vaughan College of Aeronautic and Technology. We had a female captain from um, one of the airlines, and we had female aircraft technicians. And these are all women who are able to say, I'm in this career, you can do this too. So I think really we're trying to, to cover, I guess, the trajectory from inspiration to the very practical, how are, what are the next steps you can take to actually have a career in aviation? Thank you very much. Uh, Alison, over to you uh, uh, briefly on, uh, on that same topic uh, from, uh, from the um, uh, site of the Women in Aviation International. Yeah, our organization was founded to encourage young women to consider a career in aviation and then to create initiatives that keep them um, achieving more throughout their career life cycle. And, um, and I think that if you look at the aviation and aerospace industry, representation of women has historically and still is very low throughout all career segments. Uh, and and our, our work is to expose young women to our industry and let them see uh, people that look like them, women um, and uh, in, in variety of career segments um, doing those types of jobs. It's, it's very important to be able to see yourself in those careers that you aspire to have. Uh, and so Girls in Aviation Day is a great example of, um, of that, that very thing. We bring um, a number of really uh, inspiring women um, to these events so that girls can ask them questions. Girls can see themselves in, in what these women are doing and, um, and really look at it as a way of um, how do I get there and, um, and how did you get there? And I think that that is um, one of those one of those things that's really key to um, to, to giving young women um, a path forward. And um, that is that is why our organization exists, and that is why we continue to do the work we are doing because representation is not where we want it to be. Um, and and bringing young girls into the industry is really key to changing the demographics of of what the composition of our industry looks like. Very true indeed, thank you so much. Now, finally, Jane, if you wanna share uh, a bit of the, on the same topic from yourself. Okay, well, I, I think Louise and Alison have absolutely said everything that I would say. I would just like to say that, Alison, we have actually run a Girls in Aviation Day in Ireland um, about three years ago, um, and it was a fantastic success. And we had all those inspiring women up on stage, all the young girls. It was an incredible uh, day, and we were really delighted. Um, our, our organization is absolutely um, embedded in youth um, education, and it's, how, it's why we exist. So just a very, very briefly, because I know time is short, but Irish Aviation Foundation and our predecessor, Atlantic Air Adventures, was formed in 2001 um, after our chairman visited the EAA um, in Oshkosh and decided to have a chapter in Ireland. So we were chapter 1309 of the EAA. And when I met our chairman in 2006, before any of this started, uh, he was running Young Eagles Days in Limerick Flying Club. Um, he lamped me, as they say in Ireland. He spotted me and um, reckoned I could organise this for him. And uh, since then, we have flown hundreds of children um, from Limerick Flying Club via the Young Eagles programme. And that is why we started our very first programmes were summer camp because after these kids had been inspired and they'd been up flying, that was it. You know, what else, what can they, what can they do? You're nine years old, you live in the middle of the countryside. This is Ireland, we're a small rural country. And if you don't live near an airport and you don't have aviation connections, then you're dropped in nowhere. Um, so we began aviation summer camp too to continue the education and the fostering of those children. And since that time, that is what we've been doing. So 
youth education, the inspiring of kids and showing them that anything is possible. If they don't end up in an aviation career or in the left hand seat of the airliner, that's not the issue. The issue is that by going through our programs and by exploring aviation, children's and young people's perceptions are changed. Their own perception of what they can achieve is absolutely changed. And I know that Louise and Alison have seen that personally with their own eyes, and that's what makes us continue in this. Thank you very much. Excellent. Uh, nice, nice word to 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 finish this uh, discussion. Obviously, we'd like to would have liked to uh, cover a lot more topics. Uh, however, time doesn't allow us to do so. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our panelists for joining us today. I want to thank everyone who has uh, who has joined uh, this webinar and, uh, uh, and learned hopefully a little bit more about the grants committee and the foundation as a general and learned uh, how. Uh, how important it is uh, to uh, to give back to the industry, and that's the difference, really, when you book up for uh, an ISTAT conference rather than a different conference. Some of that money will flow back to the industry and uh, make sure we have a have a good future. So thanks again, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining, and please uh, come back to uh, one of our other webinars. Thank you so much.